how do you think we can get Nigerians to embrace voluntary payment of taxes? The, the, the bottom line is we as tax administrators shifting our attention away from direct taxes. The attention should not be on direct taxes. It should be on indirect taxes like stamp duty, indirect taxes like value added tax. Indirect taxes are taxes that you pay without feeling the body. There are taxes you pay and you don't even know that you are paying. Hello and welcome to Tax Matters. It is said that drastic problems demand drastic solutions. That to solve a problem, one has to look in different directions for solution. The year 2020 has come with a lot of challenges, especially challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Tax authorities across the globe have had to devise means of diversifying sources of revenue, and the FRS is no exception. For a long time, crude petroleum had been the major source of revenue for Nigeria, but the FRS has been making strenuous efforts to redress the situation. What can be done to diversify revenue sources and more importantly, to get Nigerians to pay taxes willingly? This was the subject of our interview with Executive Chairman FRS, Chairman Joint Tax Board, Mr. Mohammad Nami. What has been the state of affairs as far as revenue generation is concerned in the midst of the pandemic? The job of any revenue agency is to assess, collect, and account for taxes. So we have with us the Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Mohammad Nami, and we are here to discuss the collection performance of the service. Mr. Chairman, welcome to Tax Matters. Thank you for having me, Amaka. Yes, sir. Sir, please, could you share with us the collection performance of the service in the period January to July 2020? Are you on course? Thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, if not for the fact that uh, you have decided to ask the qu this question, we have planned not to comment on it so that uh, we allow our performance speak for us. Uh, having said that, so far, so good. Because uh, despite the Finance Act impact on our tax base, which uh, has eroded about 60% of our tax base from the tax net today, that is from acting as agent of value added collection, at the same time paying directors, which is a company income tax, despite the fact that COVID-19 uh, has also resulted in global economic shutdown and have affected negatively the, the major revenue source of, of this country, which is the crude oil. At a time, within this period you are, you are asking, particularly in the month of March, the price dropped as low as 14 US dollar per barrel. Despite this challenge, we am happy to confirm to you that as a team and with the support that we got for, from all critical st stakeholders, the staff management relationship and the huge investment we have had in infrastructure, we are 24 billion naira better than 2019 half year performance. Mr. Nami went further to say that the target of 8.5 trillion naira earlier set for the FRS by the federal government has been reviewed downward. So the implication of what I'm saying is that our total collection based on the reviewed MTEF budget is 97% of the total target set for us and is 101% of the total revenue collected by the service in 2019. Uh, I've shared with you some of the key challenges that the global economy is currently facing. 
and the fact that 60% of our taxpayers were exempted by Finance Act from paying company income tax and acting as agent. And as a result of these challenges, government deemed it necessary to review downward our target for the, for the year. And as a result of that uh, downward review, the target is no longer 8.5 trillion. On a monthly basis before now, the petroleum profit tax that I paid by the, the IOC and the marginal fees put together were, were also always, was always in the region of about three to 400 billion per month. This has dropped significantly now by about 65%. So practically speaking, if not for the innovations, if not for the attention that we have shifted from petroleum to now non-oil tax opportunities, the, the story would have been much more worse than the one we are telling today. This kind of nonsense has to end today. Why would the bank be removing somebody's money every ah, time like that? Mr. John. My neighbor. Yes, sir. Why are you rushing to like this? Can you imagine? I just sent money to my son. And I got a debit and a lot of 15 dollars from my bank as time I am going to seek explanation from my bank because I made a transfer, not post a letter. Hmm, Mr. John. Let me explain what stamp duty is. Stamp duty is not all about postage stamp matters. Oh. The 15 era is a stamp duty levy charged by banks on customers who make transfers of 10,000 era and above from one bank account to another bank account. And uh -huh. why should I pay stamp duty for my hard earned money? Mr. John, paying stamp duty levy is a civic duty for every patriotic citizen. The taxes we all pay are collected and used by the government to pay salaries and provide basic amenities for citizens. It's even easier to make stamp duty payments now. All you need to do as a taxpayer is to log on to the following www.stampduty.gov.ng or www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-stamping. By the way, Mr. John, it pays to pay your tax, you know. Oh, oh thank you very yes, much. Sir. Thank you, my daughter. You're welcome, My sir. regards to your family. All right, sir. This broadcast is powered by FIRS, Federal Inland Revenue Service. Thank you for staying with us. The FIRS deserves commendation for the successes that it has achieved and continues to achieve. However, the service is not alone in this work. There are men and women on the field who are referred to as chartered tax practitioners under the ages of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. From time to time, new members are admitted into the ranks of Chartered Tax Practitioners. On Friday, the 28th of August, 2020, the CITN held its 42nd induction ceremony in Lagos. The induction ceremony was preceded by two separate but related events. The first was a two-day conversion training program for ACCA members, while the second was a pre-induction orientation program for other inductees. Participants at both events came together later on Friday, the 28th of August, for the induction. We did say at the beginning that these are not normal times, and so both training events and the induction were held virtually. On Monday the 24th and Tuesday the 25th of August 2020, 47 ACCA certified accountants who had satisfied other preconditions came together under one roof to be brought up to speed on the workings of the Nigerian tax system. The CITM president who declared the two-day training program open underscored the importance of the exercise. Today we are here to introduce you all to the foundations of taxation. This program is very significant because it affords ACCA members the opportunity to upskill with a Nigerian tax and law seminar to be administered and certified by CITN as a fast travel to CITN 
membership. Like uh, the participants have had, today is a training session where you are to acquaint yourselves with some of the legal issues relating to tax for you to function well. And we'll be having two sessions today. And to start with, we'll go to the first one, which is Introduction to Nigerian Legal System. Barrister Afolabi Elebiju, a fellow of the CITN, presented the second paper of the day on indirect tax laws. On day two, two more papers were presented. Mr. Emmanuel Onosami took participants through the dynamics of business taxation, covering the whole gamut of employee-related deductions and what he described as transactional taxes. Mr. Babajide Bironke, chairman of the ACCA Nigerian Advisory Committee, delivered the second paper on applied taxation, covering tax audit, tax case studies, and deferred taxation. We do record that on the 21st of May 2019, the CITN and the ACCA signed an addendum to a memorandum of understanding that was earlier signed in August 2017 on a collaborative effort between the two bodies. Let us share with you once again the interview we conducted in May 2019 with Mr. Ibironke, Chairman of the ACCA Nigeria Advisory Committee on the Conversion Programme. 2017, we ACCA were looking for organizations to work with in Nigeria, and we found Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria as an organization that we can work with in the development of taxation in Nigeria. Now, in that phase, we decided to work on so many other things apart just from just having an MOU. We decided to have an MOU that would mean that both our members would participate in joint sessions together our members who are interested in becoming CITN members will be benefiting and CITN members who also want to be our members will also be benefiting from the MOU. One of the other things we also do is in our ACCA qualification we have examination for taxation and law variant which we believe that CITN has got the capability to be able to do the Nigerian variant of our taxation examinations. So we started this journey uh, working together with the ACCA team and CITN team. We have some committee members that we're working together on developing a curriculum, on developing joint training programs that we can work on together, together with ACC and CITN. So we believe that ACC will benefit a lot from CITN's immense resource, and we also believe that vice versa, CITN will benefit from the global inside of ACC. For further update on the collaborative effort, Tax Matters also spoke with Demola Jumoke Simplis, President CITN. As already certified accountants, what necessitated the conversion training program for ACCA members? Because ACCA is an accounting body, it's not specialized in taxation. They were, during the courses that committed into the certification of being an ACCA, they must have done some taxation. But that taxation they have done, it's not Nigerian taxation. You know, SCCA is not ICANN. Even ICANN does not have the in-depth training in taxation. So it's important for them to have our conversion so that they know the laws in Nigeria, the laws of taxation, the revenue law, and our legal system. You know, a lot of Nigerians are members of SCCA, quite a lot. So if we do not allow them to come in as members of CITN, we will put it de putting them at a disadvantage. So we came to that agreement that they will be doing conversion. It's a conversion course that they have done. Just for them to know the content of the Nigerian tax laws, the revenue law, and the legal system. It's very important for them to do that. What conditions did these ACCA members have to fulfill? First of all, they are qualified accountants. By our charter, qualified accountants are part of our members. You know CITN is a multidisciplinary institution. We have lawyers with us, we have accountants, we have economists, we have public finance experts, you know. So 
see, SCCA has already inducted them as accountants. By our charter, we can have them as our members. And for them to fully qualify as our members, they have to do the conversion. They must do the training. They must be present at the training. They must be present at the training. That is very, if you, can, if you miss one, you have to start all over again because it's very important. They have to also go into the nitty gritty of the practice of taxation in Nigeria, corporate laws and all that, Inclu including tax cases, practical cases of tax laws, tax appeal tribunals, how it operates and all that. Okay, ma. Now, is there anything in the MOU or the agreement between CITN and ACCA that confers reciprocal benefits on CITN members? Oh, yes. For our members who are, ac who are accountants, who probably are not ICANN member and ACCA member, but they are not, th that means that you just have a BSc accounting. You just have HND accounting and you are a member. Now, ACCA will exempt you. That, that is the only condition. They will exempt you from some accounting subjects in their diets. They will exempt you from for such. Then you will do their own, like our own conversion exam, you will do their own conversion exams to, to become their member. That is it. But for others who are not accountants, they can also do subject for subject, subject for subject exemption with ACCA, and then do their conversion and become ACCA. So we encourage our members, just like they are also encouraging their members to be part of CITN, and we also encourage our members to be part of ACCA, ICANN, and other professional bodies. From Wednesday the 26th to Thursday the 27th of August 2020, other prospective inductees participated in the mandatory pre-induction orientation program. At the 42nd induction, a total of 582 men and women were enrolled into the hallowed ranks of chartered tax practitioners in Nigeria. Special guest of honor at the event, Dr. Timothy Oshualale Olawale, Director General of NECA, began his keynote address by acknowledging the preeminent position of the CITN in tax matters. We have no doubt that the Institute and its members will sustain its guidance to taxpayers as many of us in the public and business space rely on opinion from the Institute as the authentic professional tax management and administration. You also sustain your guidance to tax authorities because many a times in our interaction with tax authorities as voice of business, both at the national level through FIRS and in the different states, we also discover that they always rely on opinion of CITN. So we hope your robust guidance, taxpayers, tax authorities, and government on appropriate steps that should be taken as issues on food be sustained. Dr. Olawale made some recommendations. It's my considered opinion that the country should not be indebted to such huge amount of money due to borrowing from local and foreign sources if a tax administration both at the national, state, and local government is sound because there is enough resources that can be garnered through taxation, especially if we widen the tax net. I also want to say that widening the tax net is a veritable option that government must explore, rather than burdening the compliant taxpayers with more taxes and levies, it's tantamount to punishing compliance. Dame Olajimoke Simplice, 
President CITN seized the occasion to commend tax authorities at federal and state levels for the palliative measures introduced in the wake of the pandemic to ameliorate the discomfort of taxpayers. Tax authorities at the federal and state levels have been responsive in handling this situation, resulting in the initiation of measures towards mitigating the effects on taxpayers. These measures range from extending the period for filing tax returns, waivers of penalties, extension of the period for due tax payments, tax waivers for small business, and so on. They simply charge the about to be inducted men and women with these words. Wherever you are, put your searchlight on CITN activities. Wherever you are, let your impact be felt as a member of CITN. Wherever you are, promote the ethics, the codes of conduct of CITN. Wherever you are, put us on the globe. And then the climbers. The 14th president of CITN, I hereby present to you a total of 582 candidates. 47 of them are members of ACC who have gone through the conversion program on Monday, from Monday 24th to Tuesday 25th of August 2020. 88 of them are graduates under uh, professional examination, while the rest, 447, are members of ICANN members of Anan and uh, graduates of the JTB Final Inspector of Taxes in, in Taxation. In addition, all the candidates except the graduates have gone through the pre-induction orientation program for two days. The program ended yesterday. They are all qualified to be members of our great institute. In accordance with the Institute's Charter, CITN Act, Cap C 10, Volume 2, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, I hereby present them to you to be admitted as associates of the Institute. I do solemnly declare and swear that I shall always comply with the provisions of the Institute's Charter. So help me God. Now we want to recognize the outstanding students in the October 2019 Institute examination. See, this is an institute that appreciates excellence and we celebrate Excellent. Some of the inductees who qualified by examination and came tops were specially recognized and given awards. I have 12 distinguished students who are being inducted today as our winners of our professional examination prizes. The matter of indirect taxes vis-a-vis -vis direct taxes as espoused by the executive chairman FRS in the interview at the beginning of this episode resonated at the induction with Mr. Gambo Issa winning a prize in indirect taxation. The best student in indirect taxation and the winner is Gambo Issa. Star of the award segment of the event was Onyodi Ijoma Benedicta who cutted away four prizes. Here is congratulating the award winners and all the new inductees at large. We want to thank you most sincerely for watching. Remember, in this business of tax compliance, do not attempt to navigate the field by yourself. Avail yourself of the services of qualified and duly registered tax practitioners. You have a whole lot of them, including these new ones at your beck and call. See you next week.